immerse yourself in the suspenseful story of Greyhound set during World War II. Based on C.S. Forrester's acclaimed novel The Good Shepherd, this action-packed war drama follows an allied convoy as they traverse the perilous North Atlantic and valiantly face off against a relentless German submarine wolf pack in February 1942. Welcome to Mystic Recaps, your ticket to an enthralling adventure with Greyhound. During World War II the Allies were faced with a daunting challenge. 37 ships had to traverse the Black Pit, an area unprotected by air cover and swarming with enemy submarines, in order to deliver vital personnel and resources to Britain. Success was paramount for winning the war, but it seemed virtually impossible given the circumstances. The efforts made by the people involved in this odyssey remain a memorable occurrence within this fictionalized version of World War II and is an integral part of what became the longest-lasting and most intricate war effort ever. During the actual Battle of Atlantic, the greatly stressed Commander Ernest Krauss from U.S. Navy serves as both General Commander for HX-25 Convoy, as well as Captain for SS Keeling codenamed Greyhound, a Fletcher-class destroyer. Before he sets sail, two months prior to his departure, he reunites with his fiancée Eva Krauss in an elegant hotel lobby. During the middle of Christmas season they exchange gifts and it is revealed that despite being a veteran of the Navy this will be his first ever wartime command after Pearl Harbor when additional captains were badly needed. He requests Eva to accompany him, with the intention of tying the knot on a serene beach. However, she denies his proposal as they cannot get married given the prevailing state of affairs in the world. Back in present time Wednesday 50 hours to air cover. As Klaus scolded two misbehaving crewmen aboard his ship, the onboard cook Cleveland served him a cup of tea. His attention then shifts to the bridge where he is updated on their current circumstances. The Commodore Huff Duff has sent a coded message, which they have successfully received and decoded, he reveals German transmissions indicating enemy presence nearby. Klaus instantly alerts the surrounding fleet of a probable contact, causing all ships to go into high alert. The men on board scatter to their battle stations as Klaus orders for other vessels in the convoy to return quickly and take up positions in defense. Lieutenant Commander Charlie Cole interrogates his radar specialist if he had any news when suddenly they detect coordinates, showing that a U-boat has surfaced and is heading straight toward them. As the U-boat draws closer to the convoy, Klaus commands his crew not to open fire until it is in their range. However, before they can even catch sight of them, the U-boat submerges beneath the waves and vanishes from their radar. Knowing that he must act fast if he hopes to get a chance at attacking them anew, Klaus orders his team to pinpoint an intercepting point as quickly as possible, which they do. Their journey to the course of intercept begins two miles away as they decelerate for sonar detection. What follows is a grueling 10-hour hunt for the elusive submarine that seems to continuously evade them. Just when they think it's gone forever, their radar registers an unexpected spike. Contact has been re-established. The Greyhound frantically searches for the U-boat as it dives beneath their ship. In a stroke of luck, they deploy depth charges and hit the target. Jubilations throughout the crew erupt in celebration over this success, yet, those cheers quickly transform to distress when two signal rockets appear on the horizon. An unlucky Greek merchant vessel is engulfed in flames sinking into its watery grave. In order to provide aid Kraus moved Greyhound. The Greyhound is suddenly ambushed by a U-boat, launching a torpedo in its direction. Fortunately for Kraus and his crew, the projectile barely misses them. After rescuing 42 Despatico survivors, the men receive multiple messages from other escorts warning of several lurking U-boats surrounding their convoy on their journey back. A wolf pack of six subs lingered just out of range, and Kraus suspected they were patiently awaiting nightfall when visibility was minimal. Then suddenly, a U-boat arose heading towards them to launch an assault. They attempted to get the precise bearings from their radar but something seemed to be obstructing it. After successfully identifying the U-boat, they fire multiple shots at it to distract and divert it away. Krauss sends a notification of their present predicament to other ships while Cole inquires Chief Ru what can be done about the radar issue. Much to his surprise, Ru reveals that this is not an interference but may be remedied if they reset the system, although he acknowledges that doing so will take two hours which would unfortunately squander precious time. Wednesday, 36 hours to air cover. As the evening sky begins to darken, Captain Cross orders the Greyhound to be slowed down through hazardous waters. As the captain is having dinner, suddenly, faraway explosions vibrate in their ears, the attack has started. After a grueling battle that ensued, not only did U-Boat successfully sink five merchant ships but also an oil tanker which caused its own ruin too. The U-Boat that attacked the oil tanker skillfully evaded Greyhound by deploying a decoy, which caused them to exhaust most of their depth charges. Upon learning about the survivors adrift in the sea, Cross instructed his men to save them instead of tending to other vessels first, an impulsive decision he soon regretted. Meanwhile from aboard Greywolf submarine, Captain's message reached Cross over radio transmission. The captain menacingly warns Kraus that even more of his shipmates will perish if they continue to pursue them. But undeterred, he obtains reports from the other escorts signaling a new wave of U-boats ready for battle. 
Consequently, an intense, overnight confrontation erupts between the two sides. The next day, Thursday, 26 hours to air cover. In a moment of grief, Krauss was informed that the previous evening's battle resulted in five sunken ships, Vasco, Southland, Corning, Palm Barton and Powell, with two more damaged. Unfortunately, 210 lives were lost while only 23 managed to survive. To make matters worse they had no way to effectively defending against another attack due to their depleting ammunition reserves, leaving them with very little options. Krauss calls Cole and informs him that they must take a chance, regardless of the danger involved. To reach their aerial shelter, they should refrain from any more maneuvers which may cost them time and leave them exposed to further attacks. Cole calculates that the ship could reach air cover in 24 hours if they keep their current course. When a possible attack is noticed, everyone on board instantly sets to battle stations, bouncing back orders and instructions of what to do. On the horizon, a U-boat was spotted. Multiple shots were fired at it to no avail. An escort ship Dickey announced that they had the submarine within their reach and proceeded to initiate an attack. The U-boat sent an onslaught of torpedoes in Greyhound's direction, only to have them all narrowly miss their target. The duo of Dickey and Greyhound join forces, attacking the U-boat together. In a wave of volleys, Greyhound takes a damaging hit that kills three sailors, including Cleveland. Later, Krauss inquires about Dickey's condition. The captain explains that they had a few holes in the hull just above the sea level, but will patch them quickly to be back on their mission shortly. After learning of the catastrophic damage sustained by their sister vessel, Eagle, they pay tribute to those who had passed with a solemn funeral ceremony. Krauss phoned the Eagle to get a situation report, they had been struck in the engine room, and there was a blazing fire on board with multiple casualties. Econ Gustav, another one of their ships, was hit and sank before the Eagle. Within three minutes, there were no survivors. Thursday, 14 hours to air cover. The Eagle phones Greyhound, requesting permission to abandon ship due to its obsolescence. Krauss gives authorization for this action. Krauss meets with Cole to discuss their next steps, knowing that this could reveal the weakness of their fleet to the Wolfpack. Krauss suggests transmitting a single word, help, to the Admiralty to break radio silence. He feels responsible for the loss of lives in the previous day's war. Eventually, the Admiralty sends a coded message with a rendezvous point and reassurance that reinforcements will be sent to assist them. A radio transmission from the captain of the Grey Wolf arrives taunting Krauss again. Friday, three hours to air cover. The remaining U-boats launched a full-scale attack on the destroyers. With one of their torpedoes narrowly avoiding striking the Greyhound, it ricocheted off its side instead. The battle blazed with tenacious fervor from both sides, neither relenting their wave of fire. In the end, it was a full broadside that sank the mighty Grey Wolf. Air support finally arrives at Bomber Plane. The Bomber and the Greyhound combined their forces, preparing to take down the final visible U-boat. The aircraft lined itself up with the submarine before deploying several depth charges in order to attack and sink it. The sub detonates, prompting the rest of the pack to quickly scatter in fear of being exposed. After a laborious journey across unfriendly waters, they are eventually overwhelmed with relief when they reach familiar shores. As the HMS Diamond's leader communicates with Cross, he succinctly provides a summary of their mission. Tragically, seven ships were sunk and two sustained damage. Three lives were lost aboard the Greyhound. The captain reported that it was necessary for the Greyhound to be repaired for future voyages. Krauss is informed that relieved of his duties. Despite his protests, the head of HMS Diamond has states that it's in order and that he relieved the captains from other escort ships as well. Before the head of HMS Diamond ends the call, he curiously inquires about Krauss' naval experience. When Krauss replies that this is his first voyage, the commander is astonished to hear that he was able to take down four U-boats on his first crossing. After handing over his command to a junior officer, Krauss noticed the bridge crew staring at him with newfound admiration. As he made his descent to the cabin, he heard loud cheers coming from outside. He quickly ventured out onto the deck and discovered that it was due to all of the crewmen from the convoy ships cheering in his honor. Gazing around, a subtle smile graces his lips as he realizes that all of his hard work has paid off. A rainbow of fireworks illuminates the sunny sky in response to a message sent by another vessel. Thank you, Greyhound. Godspeed. Have a drink on us in Derry. Krauss trudges to his cabin, ridding himself of his uniform. His thoughts drift fondly back to Eva as he kneels by the bedside with a Bible in hand and offers up heartfelt prayers. After a hard-earned night of rest, he slips into bed. During the Battle of the Atlantic, more than 3,500 vessels carrying millions of tons in cargo were sunken and 72,200 lives were tragically lost. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, show your appreciation by hitting the like button. And subscribe to our channel for more entertaining content.